What's the longest lived property? Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we have Michael Saylor's latest interview on the Bitcoin, where he explains why Bitcoin is the immortal asset and why we all should consider Bitcoin as our primary asset. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you like the content we do here on this channel. Let's get right into the video. It reflects such a, a profound uh, new idea that unless you spend 10 or 100 hours or more, and unless you have a need to embrace a new idea, you wouldn't really appreciate it and understand it. So if someone just pokes you and says, what's your opinion of it? And you spent half an hour or an hour thinking about it. Normally you've got a kind of ignorant reaction based upon imperfect models and imperfect understanding. And it's only when you get to the point in your life when you need it and you need to understand it or you're, you know, you have a, a an inspirational experience that forces you to dig a bit deeper. Do you start to form a more um, nuanced view, right? If I if I give you um, food in a container and it and it's good for like a day, well, you got to eat it in a day. How do you store food for a decade? It's a challenge, right? And if I give you energy and the half life of the energy is three years, then then you can only plan with a three year time horizon. I think when you have um, energy in the form of money, right? Money is monetary energy, it's economic energy. So if I have economic energy and I'm storing it in a fiat currency that's hyperinflating, that means that the half-life of the energy is one year. If the currency is inflating at the rate of 7% a year, the half-life of the energy is 10 years. If I put that money into gold and gold's inflating at 2% a year, the half-life of the energy is 35 years. If I put the money into a building and the building has a useful life of 100 years, that's long. I mean, no, no building will probably last 100 years without serious maintenance, but let's just plug it in just for, the, for grins. Well, you know, so the half-life of the energy is 50 years. In 100 years, the building's gone. So what if I wanted the half-life of the energy to be 1,000 years or 10,000 years? How do I make something last forever? That fundamentally, the real issue in, with the human race is how do I make something last forever? How do I achieve a mortal life? Um, if I want something to um, uh, to circle uh, the globe forever, I have to put it in orbit. If I get it almost in orbit, it crashes to Earth, right? Yeah. Almost in orbit is not in orbit. If I get it in orbit, it'll circulate a circle around the, the world forever. But if I get it out of orbit, if I can reach escape velocity, it'll circle the sun forever. When maybe if I if I beat the sun's escape velocity, it'll circle, you know, a galaxy forever. So how do I conserve energy uh, or, or how do I propagate energy forever? And, and Bitcoin is a solution to this problem paper money isn't a solution to the problem. Land land and, and buildings aren't really a good solution. Gold isn't a good solution. And sure, I want to live forever, or I want my money to live forever, but that's a thousand years out. I would like for things to be beautiful and safe and functional now. And that's also a useful application of digital energy. If you roll the clock back 120 years and, and you think about the impact of uh, electricity, in a society and you went to everybody that operated a, a town or a hotel or a building or a ship and you said this electricity is really going to have a profound impact on your life people would have thought i don't i don't you know how do i think about this right is electricity a good thing or a bad thing well, will it burn my house down will it shock me right? a lot of people die right fires take place uh what happens if you have electrical fire on a ship big problem right it probably took people 30 years, 40 years before they had had absorbed what electricity meant. And, uh, and you know, you're like, well, I, I don't want it because it'll be regulated. Well, uh, is regulation of electricity a bad thing or a good thing? What if I could have digital property? What is property? Property is low frequency money. What is money? Mid frequency energy. If I, if I have a billion dollars and hold it for 30 years, it's digital property. If I could put it in a building, then it's physical property. I could put it into Bitcoin, then it's digital property. What if I speed it up a bit and I pay for your coffee with it? Now it's like digital money. 
What if I speed it up a lot and I do 100,000 transactions a minute with it? That's digital energy, right? What's the difference, right? They're just, they're just different frequencies. So the human race is moving forward through channeling energy. Bitcoin's just the latest chapter in that story. So what, what if I could take a billion dollars worth of electricity and put it in the palm of my hand send it anywhere on earth, store it for a hundred years and not lose any of it. What's the longest lived property before Bitcoin, right? You say gold, well gold, you can burn a building and the gold will still be underneath the building. So yeah, it's kind of indestructible in that way, but as property, as an energy container, it's still bleeding at 30, you know, every 35 years is bleeding out under the best of circumstances, half its energy. So the best conceivable idea I think we had is gold. What if I told you, right, the hu human race, the longest we ever managed to get anything to live economically was 35 years. And now we just came up with this thing that has a theoretical life of forever. It's like that, that that's a singularity, right? It's like, mm -hmm. it's like the world before oil and after oil. You ever try to, you know, try to row a boat across the Atlantic. <laughs> okay. And then compare that to a, a ship with a sail. That was a pretty big step change, right? Uh, from mechanical power to sail power. Now, uh, that ship with the sail was six to 12 week journey and then replaced that with a ship with a diesel engine.